Good evening. Welcome to this regular meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. It is Monday, February 8th, 2010. Could we have the roll call from the clerk? Chair Swift Kayada? Here. Councillor Guvenali? Here. Councillor Jordan? Here. Councillor Lennon? Here. Councillor Sherman? Here. Councillor Sullivan? Here. And Councillor Walsh? Here. Thank you. Uh, the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Town Council reports and correspondence. Does anybody have anything to report? No? Uh, I have one item. The, uh, there was a workshop held for uh, training of town boards and commissions on Monday, February 1st. And I wanted to thank uh, Councillor Penny Jordan and our Assistant Town Manager and Town Clerk Deborah Lane for putting that together. This community is very lucky to have many public spirited individuals in town who are willing to serve their community and without them we wouldn't get everything done that we do get done and I thank them for their participation. Uh, for anybody who might be interested, uh, I believe those materials are online if anybody's interested in what they went over at that training session. Thank you. Uh, now it is the citizens' opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda tonight. Is there anyone who would like to speak? If so, please come forward. Seeing no one, we'll move on. Town manager's report. Did you ask the town councilors for their report yet? Yeah. Oh, okay. Nobody had a report. Oh, good. I'll, I'll follow the same practice then. Yes, we're, if we can get through the rest of the agenda like this, we're cruising. Okay, no, no town manager's report. Uh, the next thing on our agenda is minutes of the meeting held January 11th, 2010. Is there a motion? I move that we accept the minutes as drafted. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion or are there any corrections? Seeing none, all in favor? Jim? In favor? All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. First item on our agenda is a public hearing for a restaurant malt and is it Vinus or Venus? Vinus. Vinus license application and a special amusement permit for Cape Cafe LLC. Uh, operating at 327, or that will be operating at 327 Ocean House Road. Is there anyone, I declare this public hearing open, and if anyone would like to speak to this matter, please come to the podium, state your name and your address, and let us hear your thoughts. Good evening. My name is James Wagner. I'm one of the applicants for the beer and wine license. Um, I don't know if it's necessary for me to explain my... Uh, the plans for the project, but I'm happy to give you a brief uh, summary of what we're planning on doing. Okay. Um, I just want to initially say that when I first moved to Cape Elizabeth about three years ago, I, I wrote up a very short list in my journal about the things that I wanted to accomplish in the next several years. And one of them was to bring something to Cape Elizabeth that I thought the community needed. And after a short while here, I discovered that two things were needed and I thought one was a, a cafe where you could get a, a good espresso drink uh, or a nice cup of coffee by a, a good producer and the other was a place where you could go out and after you get the kids to bed and have a, a glass of wine or a beer and um, I luckily ran into a couple of other like-minded fathers of three children David Leopold and Samir Hyder and uh, we got to talking, and we've been working on it for the last year or so. And um, David's uh, an executive at Time Warner Cable, and Samir is a doctor, emergency room doctor at Maid Medical Center, and I'm a solo practitioner in law in Portland. And uh, we got to talking, much to our wives' chagrin, 
and decided that we'd go forward with this. And we've had a really positive response from the community um, from every, every quarter. And the concept is to have, the, the primary concept is to have a gathering spot for the community. Um, a place that's family friendly, that appeals to a stay at home parents. There's a, a large demographic of stay at home parents here in Cape Elizabeth. And people are looking for a place to go where they don't have to go across the bridge. Uh, to, to get a cup of coffee, to get a good croissant, to get a bagel, right here in Cape. And as you might have noticed, we have plenty of space right here across the street. Uh, we got to talking, and um, we have a, uh, about a third draft of the lease in place, but we have a letter of intent, and uh, we anticipate in signing the lease in the next week or two. Um, plan is for 60 seats. Uh, we've been approved by the planning board for up to 60 seats. So roughly 60 seats, uh, we'd have a separate area in the back uh, that would be a kid play area. Um, it would have a, a bar, and the front end of it would be where the espresso uh, machine is and the daily coffee machine. I mean, you know, the canisters where you get your pumped coffee if you're into just the coffee of the day instead of an espresso drink. Uh, the bar would wind around and go towards the back of the building and this is right to the right of the CDS I'm talking about, that space that's 2,294 square feet. And the, uh, then you would have a bar with bar stools and a variety of furniture throughout the, the space that would be comfortable. Some of it would be tables with, with chairs, some of it would be couches, some would be uh, plush chairs, a lot of different coffee tables, something to accommodate people on laptops. We would have free Wi-Fi. Um, the amusement permit, occasionally we'd have some, uh, some music, hopefully some live music. We'd have local artists displayed on the walls. Um, we'd employ people from the, the Cape Elizabeth and Portland area. Uh, during the day, we'd be serving caf uh, coffee drinks, uh, smoothies. The um, food stuffs would be rather limited. We won't have a, an actual kitchen where we prepare foods ourselves. We, the concept is to buy from the best of Portland, if you will. We would be getting croissant and pain au chocolat from Standard Bakery in Portland. Uh, by my reckoning, the, the best croissant in New England. Uh, I go there much too often. Uh, we'd have our coffee by uh, Coffee by Design, a, a great local company, Alan Spear and his wife. We've become friendly with them over the course of this project, and we're very excited to work with them. Uh, we'd have, hopefully, uh, we're working with 158 in South Portland with Josh Pataki, who makes a wonderful bagel. It was written up in uh, Bon Appetit magazine in New York Times just recently. And uh, a variety of other local Maine businesses would uh, supply us, including Maine Root for some of the soda products. You have the organic root beer and ginger, uh, ginger beer. Uh, for beers, uh, we'd be serving a lot of the local guys, uh, one of my favorites is the Allagash Brewery, some of the Belgian products. Um, probably some uh, Shipyard, maybe Geary, some of the other local producers. Wine, I can't promise that I'll be that deep in Maine because uh, we don't have the best climate for it. But um, uh, David's very uh, schooled in wines. He might even collect a few himself. And uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, an advocate and a, a big fan of studying wines. and. We hope to have a very polished wine list and to grow it over time. Um, for foods in the evening to complement wines, we're looking to have uh, cured meat platters, uh, a nice variety of local New England cheeses from Vermont and Maine, um, some hummuses, some vegetables, but a uh, limited fare in, in the evening. And um, the design, right now we have a, a great designer named Brewster Butfield of uh, Prospect Design in Portland. He, uh, he recently completed the design of the L.L. Bean uh, Coffee by Design coffee shop in Freeport, so within the flagship L.L. Bean. So uh, with that, I'm happy to uh, take any questions that you have. Any questions? Sounds like a great proposal. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak at this public hearing? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Thank you. So we move on to item number 26, which is the actual application for the license. Do I hear a motion? 
I move that we approve the application of Cape Cafe LLC for a restaurant malt in Venice license. I'm not sure I pronounced that correctly, but anyway. So moved. And a special amusement permit. And a special amusement permit as well. I second that. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes. I've got a question. Um, I saw that the hours of operation are, uh, re they're requesting 6.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. Is that correct? How does that, I was just curious, what time does Rudy's close and what time does the good table close and do we need to be in concert with them for a very similar uh, establishment? The town manager will address that. Yeah, uh, the uh, Rudy's and Good Table are in a different zone. Okay. Uh, they're in the, the B B zone, I believe it's still called. Isn't it BB? B A. B A. Thank you. And this is the town center zone, so it's different zoning. Uh, the uh, Rudy Rudy's does close earlier than this, uh, and that was one of the uh, conditions when the planning board reviewed uh, Rudy's and. Uh, you know, they looked at similar issues when uh, the planning board reviewed this application as well, and they have approved it uh, uh, with these hours. The town center zone has a specific set of zoning rules, so this would fall under those. Are there other comments or questions? There. I just want to say how thrilled I am that you guys have put this together and you're doing it. Um, it fills a huge need that people have been taught. I've been, lived here for 10 years, and I've been hearing about for 10 years that we need a place that people can sit and gather and have, get a good cup of coffee and so forth. So um, thank you. I'm thrilled, and I hope the place is packed from the day you open. I, I want to echo Sarah's words. I really want to thank you for coming forward and starting another small business in Cape Elizabeth. As a small business owner, the more of us there are, the better it is for the community. And um, I really appreciate the fact that the space across the street will be filled and I wish you the best of luck and I too like to experiment with wines so thank you very much. <laughs> but we know where the vegetables can be purchased. <laughs> I'm assuming that. No. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think we've seen uh, how places like Rudy's, The Good Table, other local businesses add a lot to our community so I'm also looking forward to your, the success of your business. I also wanted to note that I don't think I've heard so many plugs for local vendors in any presentation <laughs> as I have tonight. So good for you. <laughs> any further comments? Okay, all in favor? Sorry. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, last night, uh, real wet, you know, blanket on this party. I, I just feel that I had to address uh, Council Member Sullivan's comment. Um, I don't think in our application that we've specified a time for closing. Um, yeah. And if I did, it, that was not right the intent. Here. It says 11, 11 p.m. I think. Well, it morning, said it's got us about 6:38. Yeah. yeah, I mean, our 11. our intent is to have that as our rough hours of operation, but I'm not asking for there to be a strict closing time. Oh. We certainly comply with the state law and the town ordinance that is in effect, <clears> but I, I'm not asking for a strict closing time. Okay, so, so is this? We it's have up to, to the council. I mean, I mean, David. My assumption would be that whatever you do in terms of hours of operation would have to comply with the ordinance. So the fact that we're approving this license and special events permit would not trump the hours that are mandated by the ordinance. So. Okay, right. and I think we're all, we're all voting based on that assumption. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. So, with that information, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> Good luck. Okay. Next item is item number 27, which has to do with Fort Williams Park revenues. There have been some recommendations of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission regarding revenues to be generated within Fort Williams Park, and the Council has had two sessions on this. One of, of several weeks ago was uh, 
a public input session where we heard from members of the public what their thoughts were on this matter. And then more recently, we had a working session, a workshop <coughs> of the council on this matter uh, where we did not take any votes because we don't take votes in workshops. But now is the time for the council to come to decisions. Uh, there is a draft motion uh, in the packet and which is based on the discussion at the last workshop. Uh, but I will be turning this over to the council liaison on Fort Williams, who is Jim Walsh. Thank you. Would you like to make a motion? Thank you, Ann. Um, we've uh, taken the, the draft is the one that's in front of you. And we've taken it and separated it out. And we're going to take uh, separate recommendations for individual votes. Yes, per the, just to explain to the public, per the council rules, any councillor can uh, request to divide a motion or divide the question. And we thought it would be easier rather than going through one gigantic motion to do it piece by piece. So, Okay. So um, I will read the first motion. The Cape Elizabeth Town Council wishes to thank the Fort Williams Advisory Commission for their report to provide self-sufficiency for Fort Williams Park. The Cape Elizabeth Town Council further agrees that Fort Williams should remain free of any entry charges. The Cape Elizabeth Town Council agrees to establish the Fort Williams Park Special Revenue Fund, which shall absorb the assets of the Fort Williams Cap Park Capital Fund and which shall account for all revenues and expenditures generated within Fort Williams Park, excluding funds generated on the Portland Head Light property. The Fort Williams Park Special Revenue Fund budget shall be handled in the same manner as all other municipal general revenue funds. All revenue generated within Fort Williams Park shall be utilized for the uses within Fort Williams Park, including maintenance, operations, capital needs, and the allocation of overhead in support of the same. Thank you. That was the motion. Is there a second? Second. And moved and seconded. Is there discussion on this motion? David. Just a question or point of clarification. The, the second portion of that motion, Jim, refers to the park, that the park should remain free of any entry charges. I assume we're differentiating between a fee to enter the park versus a fee to park a motor vehicle. Yes. So yes. people walking in yes. or just driving in and touring around and driving right out wouldn't be charged any fee, and that's what we're talking about. That's exactly it. Okay. Any further discussion on this motion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Councillor Walsh, would you The second continue? motion is effective April 1st, 2011, and continuing thereafter each year from April 1st to November 1st, vehicles parked at Fort Williams Park shall be subject to the following fee schedule. Daily parking of $5 to be collected through pay and display units. Residential annual parking of $10 to be purchased at several locations. Third, non-resident annual parking of $20 to be purchased at those same several locations. These fees shall not apply to those parking primarily to attend scheduled sporting events or athletic events. The daily fee will not be collected for the annual graduation ceremony for Cape Elizabeth High School, nor for Family Fun Day, or for the Engine One Art Show. Thank you. Is there a second for this motion? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? You go first. Just a, a question really if we, we've been talking about the possibility of holding other events at the park in the future will they um, if we do do that will they fall into the same exemption as the items that we've identified here well I think in the next motion we've made a provision yes. to allow for that um, it's it two paragraphs two paragraphs, paragraphs. Should, okay. I, should I read that for clarification for council I, governor I, I, wait. I think wait. we'll fine. Okay. I think we'll cover it in just a minute Further questions or any? I, um, I'm, I, first I'll say that I am not 100% in support of the uh, parking fees, uh, but one of the things that I would hope we could amend here, just in case this moves forward, is the resident annual parking, and if we could 
uh, amend it to have that removed. So you'd like to make a motion to amend it to get rid of resident, resident parking fees? Exactly. Is there a second for that? Jessica? Second. Okay. Is there discussion on the amendment? I'll give the motioner and the seconder first chance. Sure. Is there something you'd like to say further, Penny or Jessica? Well, I think that um, I, I'm in favor of not charging residents because we've been supporting that we purchased the Ford and have supported for ye have supported it for years. So, I think that um, that would be an appropriate um, step to take. Okay, David. Oh, I'm sorry, Penny. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, and I am sympathetic to that point of view as well, but. The whole goal here is to make the fort self-sustaining, i.e., we are not going to be using uh, property tax revenues to uh, pay for maintenance and up upkeep, et cetera. So we're telling the, the world at large this is going to be self-sustaining, i.e., no tax dollars from Cape Elizabeth are going to be used to maintain and operate the fort and for capital improvements down the road. So it seems a bit inconsistent then to say, oh, but if you happen to be a user that lives in Cape Elizabeth, you don't have to contribute to that. And so I, I think it's a more consistent position that residents and non-residents alike uh, be asked to pay a fee. Uh, though I do think because of the residents' past support of the fort over the last several uh, years that it's appropriate to have that be a, a lower rate. Uh, so that, that's why I am in, uh, reluctantly in favor of charging residents' fees, but I do think it's uh, more consistent with the overall goal here, which is to make the port the uh, fort self-sufficient. Okay. Penny, did you have something else you wanted to say? I was just going to reiterate what Jessica had to say is that, uh, I mean, the citizens of the town uh, have supported and continue to support the fort, and I think we should uh, provide free access for people who uh, have to drive from across town to get to the fort. I recognize that there are many people who live close by and can walk over there. But uh, if you aren't in close proximity, then um, access to the fort becomes by most likely car. So. Are there other comments? Sarah? I um, disagree. I, I personally think it sends a bad message to the world to say that Cape Elizabeth will be treated one way and outsiders will be treated another. I think that the um, annual parking fee for residents and non-residents should be comparable. Um, and I also think that $10 is so minimal as to be <laughs> pointless. In other words, we're, do, we're taking this step forward that's, that many people in town are very opposed to. We're kind of stepping out there. We're making people unhappy. And then to charge $10 doesn't, doesn't bring us toward achieving the goal, which is to make the park self-sustaining. So, and as, a, as an aside, I would note again, that, that, that parents of children in schools, which represents a large portion of our community, pay fees 10 times, 20 times this every year without ever being asked if that's okay and without ever getting to vote on it. I won't bore you with the list of fees they pay, but they include um, fee for use on all sporting events, booster groups, which ask you to write a $125 check before your child even steps on the field. Every extracurricular activity and club now is self-sustaining. All field trips are funded by private donations to parent groups, um, and on and on and on, to the point where supplies in the classroom are now purchased by the parents. So to me, it feels um, disingenuous or maybe hypocritical to be arguing over $10 when um, so many people in the town are forking over to the tune of $500 for their children. So personally, I think it should be even. I think it should be higher. I think at a bare minimum, it should be $25, which would mean if you visited the park during the season once a month, you would make up for what it would be to pay each time. Not to, just to be devil's advocate. I, so does that mean you're not supporting I the fees not support as laid out? Amendment. Oh, well, you, OK. And, and P.S., I might make amendment afterward that would ask them both to be comparable. Okay. We'll, we'll hold that thought. For <laughs> <laughs> Just, I hate the triple layer kind of <laughs> questions. That gets too confusing. You're keeping track of that right now. Uh, well, I'm trying. But my, my brain only goes to about two layers. So. I just want to, I, I mean, Dave, David articulated my position on this as well. I think 
I really think it's inconsistent if we don't charge a minimum, a token, call it what you will, for Cape residents. I mean, we often read about that we've been so benevolent with this facility and this incredible asset for so many years. Uh, I just think that if we, we are not um, sort of consistent with our, our citizens and charge a, a minimal fee, I think we'd be hard pressed to be able to answer the question that we, we're still, we're, we want to share this. And I think we all have to pay, especially if we want it to be self-sustaining. This is a huge change. And I think that as a citizen, we've invested in our tax dollars for years. $10 is a, just a very minor gesture, but it's an important one. And I think it's one that has to be stated. And whether it's $10 or $25, Sarah, uh, I, you know, I could, I could, I could be swayed to, to raise it to 25 But the fact is we have in front of us a recommendation that I think is one that we, um, that we flushed out at our workshop and one that I think we, we need to move forward. Frank? The only thing I'll add to um, what's already been said is that I, I believe that we would not be good stewards of this incredible asset if we didn't create a financial structure that will support it and invest in it in the future. And at current levels of, levels of spending, we're not, we're barely covering uh, annual maintenance costs. And if we don't set up a structure uh, which generates incremental revenue through these fees, um, I fear for the, the costs that will accrue in the future for failure to invest and maintain the park today. Thank you. Um, well, I agree with Councillor Governale that the fort needs our support. I think the fort is uh, in danger of gradually crumbling away. There are so many maintenance and capital needs out there, and the operational budget doesn't come close to meeting all those needs. So I agree with the general concept of fees for parking. However, I disagree with Councillor Sherman that it is uh, any more inconsistent to, uh, I don't support resident fees. I disagree that it's any more inconsistent. It's already inconsistent because we're talking about a different fee for residents and for non-residents. So I just draw the line in somewhat of a different place. I think it's appropriate to, um, in recognition of the fact that the the citizens of Cape Elizabeth bought the fort, and they have maintained the fort for so many years. They've invested so much in it, and that they still have to maintain all the roads and things leading to the fort, which is not really built into our financial calculations. Um, so I will be supporting the motion um, that Councillor Jordan has made to not charge residents. Um, I, I think that. I wanted to make one other comment, too. Councillor Lennon has talked about fees for parents, and uh, I agree that oftentimes those can be onerous, but I just want to make clear for the public, just so they don't start calling their councillors, that the school board sets all those fees, not the town council. So anyone who has concern about those fees or whether those fees get voted on or how those fees are implemented or who makes those decisions, that's the school board. I just want to make that clarification. So, as I said, I'll be supporting the motion. I think we've probably jawboned this one enough. All in favor of the motion for the amendment to not charge residents. Opposed? Motion fails. There were three in support and four against. Okay. That's the amendment. And then the underlying uh, motion, which was the motion Councillor Walsh made of these three paragraphs. Um, is there any further discussion on that? Sarah. I'd like to propose an amendment that would make resident and non-resident annual parking fees comparable at $25 per year. So you're, pro okay, an amendment, okay. Is there a second for that? Second. Okay. Um, the motion is to make resident and non-resident, Capturing this right, Deb. Yes. Resident and non resident fees, the annual path fee at $25, you said? Um, is there discussion? David? I, I come back to the report of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, which uh, was quite thorough and laid out 
uh, projected revenues uh, based on a slightly different fee schedule. Then the town manager, I think at the request of some council members, came up with projections based on this type of fee schedule, which in my view is going to be uh, more than adequate to raise enough revenues to make the fort self-sustaining and hopefully at some point in the future allow us to begin planning for capital improvement projects. So I would rather implement a fee structure that is a little less aggressive than what Councillor Lennon has proposed uh, to make this within the reach of virtually everybody who wants to visit the fort so that they can visit the fort. And I'm just afraid if we bump it up, go from zero to $25, we may be discouraging those families in the area that have used the fort year after year for family picnics, et cetera. I think a daily fee of $5 and an annual fee of 10 or 20, depending on your residency, is more than adequate to suit our goal, which is to make the fort self-sustaining and to begin planning for our future. Because my hope is that this is not going to be the only source of revenue at the fort. We're going to explore other options. And I just don't want to see us get too high and get out of too many people's price ranges. And I know $10 for a resident may not seem like a lot, but we've got those projections from the town manager. All those fees will add up. Um, ironically, I think a lot of people who will pay that fee will be parents of school-aged children, but I really just don't see the link between the two, as uh, my fellow councillor does. We're focusing on the fort. We want to make the fort self-sustaining, and although I may not like paying all those other user fees on the school side, I think that's a different issue. So I will not support the proposed amendment to the motion. Okay. Anybody else? Yep. I, I agree with Councillor Lennon. I, I don't support fees for residents in any case, but I certainly would not uh, be in favor of increasing what is already here. And I agree with what Councillor Sherman said with respect to what the budget projections are. Right. The only thing I'll add to that is that um, a fee of $10, $10 may be low enough so that is almost universal um, acceptance for it. Um, yeah, whereas a $25 fee might cause people not to select to get it, and not having done the sensitivities, we went, the revenue differential may be insignificant. And therefore, I think for conservative purposes and also for the purposes of that the, the um, estimates, the forecasts that have been done suggest this is adequate to cover the, the park, I, I'm more in favor of the $10 fee. Jim, did you want to say anything? Well, I'm, you know, I'm, at this point, I mean, it, is, is $15 a better number? Is 20 a better number? I mean, you know, pick a number. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not so sure when we ask the manager to re-forecast. Um, I think that the focus was primarily on the $5 and the pay and display. I think that's where we, I think we didn't spend a whole lot of time on this component. But, I mean, I, I, I just think that, that you know, charging folks in Cape Elizabeth a nominal fee, whatever that is, it, the same as what we would charge somebody from outside, I think it just is, in fairness, makes good sense. I, I you know, I, $25 is, uh, you know, doesn't seem like a lot of money, um, but I guess, uh, you know, the, whatever the council decides, I mean, I, I, I feel like it, it's a conversation we should have had and we have now had that conversation, and I, um, I you know, I, f I feel twenty-five dollars is a fair number. Okay, um, I will not be supporting the motion. I'm not in favor of re fees for residents anyway, so I, it wouldn't be consistent to be voting to, <laughs> to make them even higher. Um, so, all in favor of the motion to make resident and non-resident uh, annual pass fees twenty-five dollars a year. That was in favor. That was in, that was in favor. Two. Two. Opposed? Five. Motion fails. Okay. Now we're back to the underlying motion, uh, which is the one that Jim read a few minutes ago um, about fees. Is there anything anybody wants to say about that, or are there any more amendments? Okay. Okay. We'll vote on that motion then. All in favor of that one. Five. Opposed? Two. Okay. Great. Motion passes.
Um, Jim, would you like to third motion go on? is that daily parking fee for renters of the picnic shelter may be collected as part of the rental of the shelter at the option of the renting party. That the Fort Williams Advisory Commission shall propose a fee schedule beginning in 2011 to accommodate the option. The parking fee for special events may be adjusted as part of the fee for that special event during the approval process for the special event. Is there, thank you. Is there a second? And second. It's been moved. Thank you. Is it moved? It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Okay. Motion passes <clears throat> six to one. Um, moving on. Okay. The town will have an advisory referendum on the implementation of pay and display parking on the same date as the initial vote to validate the school budget with the ballot question to read as follows. Would you favor the town establishing a pay and display parking program for Fort Williams Park? Okay, is there a second? Second. And moved and seconded, is there discussion? I'm gonna be the Lone Ranger again. <laughs> I, I just question the wisdom of going to referendum on this question. There's been enough discussion, enough debate about it. I certainly have heard a lot of people talk about it uh, in, during the two elections that I went through to become a councillor. I feel very strongly that we have a town council, town manager form of government. It's not a town meeting form of government. We've been elected to make the decisions and to do the citizens' business. And I believe this is a very important decision. And while I fully appreciate wanting to send it back to citizens, since we had a citizens' referendum three years ago, three years is a long time, and a lot has happened, and a lot needs to be done. And by doing so, we're going to delay the implementation of these self-sustaining initiatives for what three months six months fully implementing in 2011 and I just believe that that time is a is, is of the essence here and uh, I, I feel that putting things to referendum I'm concerned as to what we put to referendum when do we what what's the criteria around sending something to referendum uh, do we have a criteria as a group because we have lots of issues to attend to this year. And one could argue that anything that is uh, politically charged winds up in referendum. And I'm just very concerned about it. Um, we went to referendum three years ago. I wasn't on the council. I was a citizen in the town, whether that was the right decision or the wrong decision. I just believe that the time for us to act as it relates to the self-sustaining components of this park is now. It's not to wait till June. And frankly, again, I, I believe very strongly that, that, you know, this whole issue of referendum is a dangerous path to go if we don't have some, some serious discussion about what we, what we would put to the referendum or not in the future. Because you could argue that anything that is controversial uh, winds up back in front of the citizens. And again, I, you know, I, I think it's important to have these discussions. I think that's what we've been elected to do. And there can be diversity of opinion here. But I strongly don't believe that that's the right decision at this time. Thank you. Anybody else? David. Uh, Jim, I share most of the concerns you've raised. Um, I, I really don't think the council was elected to send issues out to referendum votes. Uh, that being said, the only distinction here is that we already sent the same issue out three years ago, and I have to respect the history that we have, uh, and very recent history, of having already sent this issue out to a vote. So I am very reluctant to say to the people who voted against fees three years ago, well, sorry, we're just going to completely disregard, disregard what you said. Now, some of those folks may say, well, the fact that we're sending it out a second time means we're disregarding what they said. But my, I share your view. I think that things have changed. 
And because I, I've heard the overwhelming sentiment that we should pursue fees and other revenue generation of, at the fort, I'm prepared to send it out for a referendum. I'd rather not, frankly, but I, I, I just don't see a way around the vote we had three years ago. So I reluctantly will vote in favor of the motion. Sarah. Just to pick up on Frank's point, um, you know, given that we are charged to be stewards of the town's resources, both now and in the future, I, I do question whether this is even an option to be voted on and possibly voted down. Because what if it is voted down? Then what do we do? Is that a responsible way to go forward? We've already shown that this fort is unable, or basically unable to sustain the fort um, with current tax dollars. So it, it's crumbling. It's, there's, the capital needs are in the millions of dollars already. So I guess I'm feeling quite torn. I agree with Councilor Sherman that uh, it, feel, it, it feels it feels like the right course to send this out to vote again, given that it was voted on once. On the other hand, I think we should pause and consider what we're going to do if it's voted down. I mean, we're going to, it, it means tax, a tax increase <laughs> or a crumbling fort. Those would be our two choices. I think, there, I think there's another choice which comes down in here, which are there other revenue generating alternatives, which we've talked about as well. And what are they and how? <clears throat> quickly can we get some of those implemented? And how much money would it they possibly generate? Mm -hmm. Yes, Jessica. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate very much what Councillor Walsh has said, and I do agree with so much of it. Um, I, I think that because we had a recent vote, um, it went, you know, we've, this issue has gone to the town. and. To me, this is a this is a this is more than the the usual conducting of town business because the fort is such a special part of the town and enjoyed by so many people beyond our own community um, that I really think that the people need to speak on this one. And and I I would like to I take an issue with something Councillor Lennon said. I think. If, if the people say no, uh, no fees, uh, no pay, pay display, and you know the, the fort does lose money, then we will have to work hard to, to take care of that. But it, it doesn't automatically, my philosophy is it doesn't mean automatic tax increase. I mean, I just don't, I don't ever want that to be the first thing that pops into my mind. There, there have to be other ways to, to take care of the fort, but anyway. So, thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Um, all in favor of sending it out to the public per Jim's motion? Five. Opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Jim? Okay. This is the almost, last. We're almost to the end. Yeah, almost to the end. This is the last one. Effective April 1st, 2011, and continuing thereafter each year from April 1st to November 1st, the town shall collect fees from the estimated 800 buses visiting Fort Williams Park. This includes fees from tour buses, camp, and recreation buses. The town manager shall meet with bus tour representatives and shall propose fees to the town council no later than July 15th, 2010. The fees shall be similar to those recommended by Fort Williams Advisory Commission, but may provide for package plans for frequent visitors. The Town Council hereby requests that the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, that they continue to explore income potential from concessions, special events, new park uses from other suggestions made by citizens. The Town Council shall receive a report on these suggestions from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission by December 31st, 2010. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Jim? <laughs> sorry, about, <laughs> sorry about that. I had arrived this way. That's fine. That's okay. Um, I, I'm, get, I'm getting you're the liaison. Good flash here. <laughs> I, would, I would just, I, I could ask, I ask the question, um, why can't we start to charge the buses now? 
question. That was my mm -hmm. question or observation. I thought there, there was sentiment at the workshop that we as a council might feel comfortable uh, not, not necessarily charging the buses now, but beginning that process and not feeling like we needed to hear from the public on that, that the, the, the public vote was really focused more on individual users as opposed to the, the, the buses. Is that, is that right? I'll, I'll let yeah. the manager address that. These motions were drafted specifically to enable that to continue to enable it to happen. The only piece in this series of votes that's subject to the advisory referendum is the establishing the pay display parking. The rest of it, as this is drafted, is not subject to that advisory referendum, is not being asked. And even the, the advisory referendum is an advisory referendum, and the council would need to undo the action on setting the fees uh, with the pay display system if the public vote, you know, you'd have an option to do that after the public vote. But you get, Jim, I guess your question was different. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I, I question whether could we start the process now and by April 1st be implementing some form of this of, to of generate bus, bus, bus fees. fees, trolley fees, whatever, now, so as to have that whole process of self-sustaining start this year. I'll let the manager address that. The, the, the council can do what the, the council desires. I would like to point out that the Fort Williams Advisory Commission specifically re recommended uh, that the bus tour companies uh, need time in order to begin to uh, set their fees and to uh, know that this is going to happen and to uh, you know be able to come without you know being surprised at the door. Uh, Okay. They also did meet with some representatives of the tour operators who expressed concern and expressed the desire that we, we try to work with that important part of the main tourism community uh, to make sure we put in a, a system that's workable and that does not in the end uh, discourage the buses from coming to our site and uh, providing uh, revenues for our gift shop. I, not just to answer that, I had heard some input in our public hearing from representatives who were present that there was, or maybe they weren't representing their companies and shouldn't have spoken the way they did, but I did hear that they thought that they could turn on a dime a lot faster if they had to. That's, I, just maybe I missed, we had at least two people sitting in the audience who spoke that way. I don't know. Yeah, um Hang, hang on one second. Frank, did you have something? Yeah, I did. <clears throat> Not specifically related to that, but in terms of the wording of this, um, if the buses, the way this is worded, if the buses don't stop and they drive through slowly, um, will they have to pay? And our, one of our opening things we voted on was that there is no entry fee. I just want to make sure there's no loophole here for the buses. Thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm hearing little. <laughs> well, my understanding little was is uh, the the act of stopping and parking would trigger the fee for the tour buses. But they don't yes. stop. And park. If they don't stop and continue on through. Then my understanding is there would be no fee. That's that's my understanding also. From the way, based on the way. Because otherwise, otherwise we'd have to have we'd have all the issues that you have with entrance fees, which is a booth. Uh, somebody monitoring, you know, whatever. I might have to attend consequences of keeping the buses, but then. I, I think much of this, we've tried to think and rethink all the various potential paths out of this decision tree, but there may well be some unintended consequences, and we'll just have to monitor it carefully. I know the manager will. But um, we'll, the council will have to stay on top of the issue, too, to make sure there aren't any overwhelmingly bad yeah. unintended consequences. It's, this is always the issue when you start something new. So I'm, I'm content with the way it's worded right now. David. Oh, yes. Jessica. Sorry. I just wanted to support what Council Walsh has said. I, too, recall uh, some comments to that effect that uh, I do believe there was someone who said that um, Tours are some are frequently put together at the very last minute. 
depending on what um, people on various um, cruise ships or whatever decide they want to do. And so um, I just want to say that I, I do remember hearing that as well. David. I, actually, I don't remember hearing that, but I, I thought it was more to do with the uh, fee schedules that are set. The tour bus operating companies tell the cruise ships or whomever, this is what we're going to charge, and those are printed out and sort of in place for any given season. And I would rather that the town work and partner with these companies to encourage their continued uh, um, entrance into the park with the tourists who frequent the gift shop. And, and I, I think this would be a, a much better in the long run if we give ourselves a little bit of lead time to implement the fees for the tour buses. I, I agree with you, uh, Councillor Sherman. I think that there is some risk. It's hard to quantify how much risk, but I think there's some risk involved in trying to institute these fees abruptly for the for the bus companies. They're not going to be happy anyways, probably, but with any change, but uh, trying to institute them too abruptly, I think, risks uh, what happened in Kennebunk Court a few years ago when buses stopped going. They ran into some similar issues down there. Buses stopped going, and the merchants down there uh, experienced a big decline in business, and I would hate to see the uh, buses, which are a, a significant <coughs> source of revenue at the Portland Museum um, gift shop uh, and a major source of funding for the Portland Headlight Fund, uh, I would hate to see those endangered by not working in a collaborative manner with the buses. So I'm content with the wording as it's proposed here. Any? Um, I'm, I'm kind of in agreement with um, Councillor Walsh because I think within any opportunity there's near-term and long-term um, things that can be done. And so if you look at the buses and you start working with the bus companies now and the tour companies now, you may be able to identify a, uh, a gradual change that gets us some um, some revenue early on, and then uh, you kind of transition into the bigger, the bigger, whatever solution might be. But I, I think if you, if we try to sit here and say, here's how the uh, companies work, when we don't know what the opportunity is inside them because we don't really know enough about them to make that decision, I would say that the if we can get some things implemented early, then we should try to do that. I would I'd make two points. I, I agree with you. It's good to think short term and long term. Um, I was around on the council the last time through on this, and I remember a couple of bus company representatives officially coming and speaking. Um, and the way they said that their companies, now again, this is a couple of years old, <clears throat> the way that their companies um, determined their schedule was they did them almost a year in advance, they determined you know, what the route was, what the price was, they put it out there, they printed all their brochures. And so again, I would be concerned um, of the danger that might put our uh, museum shop uh, revenues in if we instituted this and the unintended consequence, as Frank mentioned, occurred that they stopped coming because then I think we could be in a pickle. Um, and I note that this language here says the town manager shall meet with tour, bus tour representatives and shall propose fees to the town council no later than July 15th. I think the managers heard a, a message from a number of the councillors that they would like to move as quickly as possible. So if there's any um, moving along on this issue that can be done, I'm sure the manager will move along on it with the bus companies. So he's not reacting, but he's no, hearing he's, he's hearing he's hearing, he's hearing us. I'm waiting for council direction. Yes, he's waiting for council direction. So I, I think he's got a sense of our direction. Yes. I, the December thirty first date that's been proposed for the advisory commission, was that after some discussion with them in terms of them believing that that was a realistic date to come back? 
for, I, I, I just don't recall a discussion about that date. I, I don't think there was any real discussion about that date, but you know, my past experience working with boards and commissions and working with councils uh, is it, it, you know, there's a lot of in-depth issues there, particularly if, if you want them to really look at an operational model of concessions and who'll run them and uh, the, the possible take on them. It's not, a, it's not a simple task. So, you know, you can try to push it earlier, but you know, it's, we're already February. By the time we know it, it's summer. I, I would point sure. out that one of the town's coal town council goals is to have broad, widespread public impact, uh, in, in, input on matters of importance. And I'm sure um, having concessions or new and different special events, new park uses, those could be all of significant interest, interest to citizens. And I think we want to make sure there's enough time for citizens to be weighing in on all those things. So we need to give Fort Williams Advisory Commission time to research it, put some ideas out there, get some input, and then report to us. Penny. I was going to comment on the same thing about the date. And um, what I was hoping we could recommend is that some level of progress reports, because I think the date seems so far out now, and that's why it's going to be December 31st. But if they're without creating a lot more work for the uh, advisory commission, if we could have um, progress reports of some sort, just so we have, know what's happening. I wanted to mention, we, we do have liaisons on most of the council goals, and this is a, 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 a goal with a liaison, and I think Councillor Walsh's so views we are really well known. Yeah. I'm taking the same position the manager has. I've heard you. <laughs> I, 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 I'm waiting for you to give me direction. I heard you. I mean, there were a lot of incredible suggestions. This entire process has brought out unbelievable suggestions from citizens, and a lot of those people have also volunteered to step up and participate mm -hmm. with the advisory mm -hmm. uh, group. So it's, I think it'll be a really rich experience for some people because there are a lot of subject matter experts in our town that you know, we need to tap and, mm -hmm. and, and solicit and help get the right answer. And that's what, I, that's what I'm hoping to do. So. I think your suggestion is a good one of regular updates. And I think we can count on Councillor Walsh to provide us with uh, provide the council with those regular updates. So I think we've discussed this one. Um, there's a motion before us, the, the last one on Fort Williams. Um, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Great. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I want to thank the Fort Williams Advisory Commission for all their work on this subject. It's been heavy going at times. Uh, and I want to remind Everyone of what I am sure is a fact that everyone on the town council and probably everyone in our community has the same basic interest, and that is to keep Fort Williams the special and wonderful place that it is today. Um, we all love the fort. We want to save it from whatever might be endangering it, whether it's crumbling stonework or invasive plants or, or whatever. There's a lot of needs out there. Reasonable people can disagree about exactly how to meet that goal of being good stewards of Fort Williams. I think the council has uh, had an excellent discussion on it. We will be moving forward with a citizen vote, and I encourage everyone to get out and vote at the citizen referendum. Uh, the citizens will be able to tell us uh, in this advisory referendum what they want and what they prioritize. So I look forward to uh, finding out what's on everyone's minds as expressed at the ballot box. So thank you very much. <coughs> Moving on. Item number 28. The Ordinance Committee has a report. And Chair of Ordinance is David. Me. The Ordinance Committee met uh, the other week to discuss the post-construction stormwater ordinance, uh, and we did vote to send that to the Council uh, with the recommendation that it be then set for a public hearing. Uh, my understanding of this ordinance is that it is uh, essentially required by state law. This is primarily a reporting requirement. Uh, and 
frankly, I think we'd probably be better served if Mr. Malley would be willing to give us a, a brief summary if the council so desires, or if not, we could just set it for a public hearing. Um, but it might be useful to, if, if folks would like. A, a brief overview. Brief. Well, brief enough. Uh, at Councilor Sherman's request, we put together a summary page for you, which you have in your packet, which sort of outlines the requirements of the ordinance. Uh, as you said, it is a requirement of our, our obligations with the Bain Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, we are currently working and have been working with a group called the Interlocal Stormwater Working Group, which is made up of 11 communities uh, that uh, have to comply with uh, the requirements of the Clean Water Act. All of the communities have passed this ordinance with the exception of two. We are one of those. We're a little bit uh, behind on this. But uh, what we used for a template was uh, a template from the Town of Yarmouth and uh, the Maine Municipal Association. And uh, it's uh, proposed to be uh, a new Section 4 in the Conservation Ordinance, which has uh, existing uh, stormwater uh, design and non-stormwater discharges references in it. Uh, and it's the last one of the last pieces of our sort of ordinance puzzles that we need to amend to be in compliance with our stormwater management plan and the requirements from the main DEP. So again, if you have any questions on the bullets, it's a little bit technical, but essentially, as I told uh, the ordinance committee, it really formalizes our reporting requirements. A lot of this we're doing right now. Uh, it's really, it's going to affect uh, <coughs> any new subdivisions and proposals that come forth to you after the adoption of the ordinance. And, uh, so if you have any questions, I can try to answer them. But. Michael. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to address the, the point that Mr. Malley just made. Uh, th there was a question as to whether or not it might affect something that had already been approved prior to this. Uh, there's suggested language that clarifies uh, that, it, that it be effective with new proposals from this point on. And I was given draft language today to try to accomplish that. Uh, I think, David, you probably saw an email today that uh, I suggested the ordinance committee has to meet anyway, or they plan to meet on the 25th, and that they would simply look at that language. I don't like to place language in front of you changing ordinances at the last minute, so they'll be looking at that as it relates to the effective date uh, of this. Okay. Are there any questions for Bob? Yes. I had some questions, but I mean, I, I'll go ahead and ask some of Bob, and then maybe they they're, they should be addressed to the Ordinance Committee, but as I read through this, some things came to mind. On section 18-4-9 um, on page 9, penalties, fines, injunctive relief. Each day that such a violation continues shall constitute a separate violation. So when someone's notified that they have a violation of, um, of the uh, stormwater management, um, every, every, success, every day that they're violating is, is another violation. I mean, that's the way it's written. And my question is, is, is this is from the original notice of violation that that occurs? So in other words, if, you're been, if you've been given notice that you're in violation, say a, a developer, you know, or someone's developing a lot or a developer's developing a development <laughs> and um, and he's been notified by, by you or uh, the town manager that he is in violation so from that very day that he receives the, the notice then every day until that is corrected he is another violation I just thought it was confusing the way it was written it, it does sound a little bit repetitive but that's actually pretty standard language okay. in our ordinances that uh, when, when you ever you have a code enforcement violation, every single day is a is a new violation. A new violation. And it would go, you know, if we eventually took them to court, and we were looking for, you know, a penalty, uh, that's the beginning point of discussion and negotiation. Okay. <clears throat> Next section, consent agreement. Enforcement authority may, with the approval of municipal offers and, and municipal officers, enter into this consent agreement. I won't read the whole thing, but is this the usual practice? I'm wondering. I mean, it sounds like a very convenient way to address something like that, but is it, is it usual or? It's, it's a little bit unusual. Uh, okay. The other consent agreements we do, we usually do at the staff level, uh, but this does particularly provide that it go to the municipal offices. Uh, okay. 
and I have just one more. <laughs> um, actually, I thought it was quite interesting. Um, in the, the following sections on that page, uh, there is discussion of the appeals process and, and so forth. Um, and my, I'm wondering um, if you receive notice of violation and you then um, submit an appeal, are you, um, is your, are, are you still in violation every single day or is any appeal, any uh, co uh, correctly submitted appeal, does, does that stave you off from having to meet the requirements of the town for the time period in which you are in an appeal process? I'm just curious. Defer to the town manager on that. Because uh, you know, it doesn't I, really say. I'm not an attorney, but usually that's determined at the time. You know, we, we might go in for a restraining order to get something to stop if it's not being done. It would depend on the individual circumstances and would depend on, you know, preliminary rulings of the judge. Because it, it occurred to me reading this that you could actually, I mean, if you were an unscrupulous individual, that you could actually, you know, stack up all your appeals and buy yourself a whole lot of time while damaging our water supply, possibly. So I just... Yeah, I think that. that, I mean, I, I don't see, you know, compliance as a huge issue here. In fact, we're working, there's a proposed, uh, our development's been approved for Eastman Road, for example, condominium development. They've already provided us with a stormwater maintenance agreement as part of site plan approval. So um, those folks were more than willing to work with us on making sure that the BMPs and the infrastructure were maintained. So uh, yeah, I thought we're not really anticipating that it's going to be a huge issue, unless someone just completely says, no, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Okay, well, I just wonder because it doesn't really say, and I thought, well, perhaps when in negotiations with the town, that sort of thing is covered, you know, and is dealt with in usual practice. So, you know, sounds like it is. Most of any instance with violation of ordinances, we always first look for al alternate dispute resolution uh, rather than uh, court. Thanks. I hope that would be the case with any violation of this. Any further questions? I have one question. Was the, but this is not Bob, David. The um, ordinance committee voted unanimously? Uh, it was unanimous. Okay. And then um, just one note for Bob. Mm -hmm. On page 3 of 14, you notice in all the definitions, they seem to be in alphabetical order, but there are two town and town permitting authority that got stuck in see that. after E, so you may want to just we'll make sure reformat. We we'll get that squared away for you. It's just a typographical thing. Okay, is there a motion? I move that we set a public hearing for consideration of the post-construction stormwater ordinance amendments. And that would be at the next public hearing in March? March 8th, March 8th council March 8th. meeting. Yes. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much, Bob. And thanks to the Ordinance Committee for their work on this. Next item is item number 29. Uh, the Appointments Committee has a report. And Penny is the Chair of Appointments. Yes. Yes, Council Chair. Uh, the Appointments Committee has no candidate to uh, put forth at this time. Uh, we're recommending that we open the, uh, the opening for the Personnel Appeals Board uh, be uh, opened up and for applications from the community, and we will fill that position um, after that process. So it will be advertised in the Courier? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Penny? Can you table this? Uh, do we have to table it? Or she just gave a report? Okay. We accept the report. It just gets disposition. It makes it oh. clearer in the record. Well, we'll, how about a motion to receive the report? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. All in favor of receiving the report? It's unanimous. Great. Thank you, Penny. And the rest of the ordinance committee. Okay, uh, item number 30, whole location 
permit. Mike, do you want to speak to this? Yes, there's a new home being built on uh, Thomas Thompson Road, which is offshore road. Uh, you can see it being built in back of uh, Beach Bluff Terrace. Uh, this is simply a pole out by Shore Road that uh, will enable utilities to be connected to that property. Could I ask, it has, I don't know whose property this is on, it's in the right of way. It's, in, it's on town property. It, but it's in, not in front of somebody's It's house It's right on, the, there's a driveway that leads to this particular property and it's right next to the driveway. And so did, were those people made aware that this the, they're, pole They're is, urging, the people who would need a need of it are rather impatiently waiting for the poll. Okay. okay, just check. Yeah. Okay, is there a motion? I didn't want to call, but they are impatient. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. Well, no, I just wanted to make sure they yeah. knew about it and Can I ask weren't. You a yes, go ahead. Um, is it typical to ha need a, a, t a poll for each new house, or is it just a particular location that there's not one near enough? Uh, that's a tough question. Usually when, uh, Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. It's it all, you know, they, they, CMP has engineers go out there, or Fairpoint, whatever the case may be, and they look at, at the different poles and what the lengths are, where the drops are, where the wires would have to go, and they do an analysis. And, uh, the you know, I think there are probably some houses that go in that don't need a, an additional pole, but most, most new homes uh, end up uh, needing a new pole. But there's nothing, so there's nothing unusual about this? There's, no, this is as standard as can be. Okay, right. Routine. Is it also standard that every new poll when it goes in, we have to approve? Yes. <laughs> yes, Frank. You didn't know about that when you ran, <laughs> did you? No. Did you have a field I trip might, to I the might location? reconsider. <laughs> if, I, if I might answer that question. There, there is a provision in the town charter that the town manager can act, it's in the state law, that the town manager can act as the municipal offices in instances like this. However, the practice in Cape Elizabeth has always been that the council has approved uh, poll locations. That's fine. I, I would add that occasionally there is controversy, and that's why it comes before the council. So, um, so did we get a motion? I'm happy to make a motion to approve <laughs> the application of Fairpoint Communications for a poll location on Thompson Road at its intersection with Shore Road. Is there a second? I'll second that. I moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Item number 31 has to do with the Cape Courier lease. Michael? Yes, the Cape Courier, uh, which is a not-for-profit newspaper unaffiliated with the town, uh, has lease space at the town hall for many years. It's on, it's in back of us on a lower level, only accessible by uh, four or five stairs. Uh, the, the rent is very minimal, it's $100 a month, but it's, there's nothing we would otherwise use that space for, and because it isn't accessible and has other challenges, uh, we feel it's a fair market rent. Is there a motion, Sarah? I move that we extend the terms of the current lease for the Cape Courier nonprofit newspaper uh, and a new lease expiring March 31st, 2012. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? I was glad to see all the detail on the lease, including all the insurance, indemnification, et cetera, which is very appropriate given those stairs. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Item number 32. Fort Williams Park 2010 use requests. Uh, is there a motion? Sarah, can I bundle them all together? Yes. That would be. I move that the I move that we approve the recommendation to the Fort Williams Advisory Commission for the following groups for uses of the Fort Williams Park in 2010. Uh, Cape Elizabeth <coughs> Little League, Cape Elizabeth High School. Do I have to read the dates along with it? No. Cape Elizabeth High School Commencement, Cape Elizabeth High School Commencement and Rehearsal, Cape Elizabeth Family Fun Day, the Portland Amateur Wireless Association, TD Bank Beach to Beacon 10K Road Race, Road Race Setup, Monegan Race Observation Post, and the CEFD Engine 1 Art Show. 
in, we are aware that the Monhegan uh, observation post overlaps with Beach to Beacon, and we're hoping to find locations, uh, a location for the observation posts that in no way interferes with the road race operations. So noted. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Is there just thank you? Is there discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Okay. It's unanimous. Thank you. And we have item number 33 before us, which is a request for an executive session. I do want to point out that after the executive session, the council, the council will be moving to the room, the Jor Thomas Jordan, um, William Jordan, the William Jordan, sorry, I've got my Jordans mixed up there, <laughs> sorry. The conference room, the Jordan conference room up behind us for the executive session, which is not open to the public, but then after that we will be um, we adjourning the town council meeting, but we will be adjourning the workshop, and the workshop that we are having uh, has to do with recycling and paper bag further discussion on those items. Uh, so because we are not going to be coming back into public on-camera session, I'd like to ask if uh, this is our second opportunity for citizens uh, to discuss items not on the agenda. Is there anyone who would like to come forward? Seeing none. <clears throat> Done with that. So do I hear uh, a motion for item number 33? Sarah. I move we enter executive session in accordance with 1MRSA 405 to discuss the annual evaluation of the town manager. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. <coughs> All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we're done 